Welcome back to the Flow Track Podcast, Flow Track Podcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and wherever else you listen to podcasts and our website, flowtrack.org slash flowtrack podcast. I'm Kevin, joined by Lincoln, who it appears has raised the ire of one Wade Van Niekirk. Lincoln, I'm looking at this tweet He's, he sent out yesterday. Focus mm. 2021, all caps, I am far from done. Mm-hmm. Uh, that appears to be a response to the clip that you titled, w- Wade Van Niekirk might be done. Your response. Yeah. Well, good for him for, for obviously he's going to go down fighting. I applaud him for that. Um, if he can use anything I say as motivation, that's, that's fantastic. I'm just saying what I have seen so far. Uh, I don't think he's done insofar as let me, let me clarify done as insofar as he's not gonna be able to qualify for the Olympics or maybe even make finals. I think he can do that. I just think he's done being a gold medal threat in the 400 that that is what I've said. Um, I think it would be more surprising to me at this juncture if he got a gold medal than it would be surprising for me if he struggles to make the Olympic final. Um, just be- from what I've se- seen so far, I mean, the 45-second the runs have not looked real sharp, and I know he stumbled out of the blocks in one race. And like I said last week, I know he also, you know, coming from coming back from, a, even though it was a long time ago, traumatic injury, he also had COVID in the summer. Uh, it's been a long road for him, and he's still relatively young. But as you kind of highlighted, you know, this is the the tendency in the 400 is you have a few good years. And then once you get in your upper 20s, it's real hard to stay competitive. If you add in a a, a really, really serious catastrophic injury, uh, well, catastrophic is a bit serious, but, you know, a, a, a career altering injury that just becomes doubly tough. Um, I would have thought he would have been running faster if he was still going to be a threat to the to the guys that are, you know, that have been winning and running fast in, in recent years. So I, that that to me, went into my assessment of saying that I think he's done as far as the weight Van Niekirk of old. Um, and not just that, not just running world records, but also I think, you know, running below 43.5 and being competitive for a gold medal. I, I don't think he's coming back to that. Um, so that's what I meant by done. Um, done as in as far as he can never run another race. No, but he's, 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 he's cooked as far as where he used to be. That That's what I meant. Okay, that was a long response, and that was a very serious response. If Mr. Van mm-hmm. Niekirk is listening, let me just tell him this. Rest assured, sir, Lincoln is wrong about most things on this show when he makes bold pronouncements. So this should actually give you some semblance of confidence because mm-hmm. when Lincoln says go right, people go left. When they say up, it ends up being down. He has a long track mm-hmm. record on the show. I don't expect him to know that because he probably doesn't listen at all. Uh, but I just want to fill him in on that fact. This could be the thing that rejuvenates his career. This could be the yeah. reverse jinx that turns it all around and gets him sub 43. Love to see it. I would not be rooting against that. <laughs> let me let me be clear. Um, it would have been awesome if he would have been petty enough or done enough work to like look me up or anything like that or tagged at least <laughs> flow track. That would have been funny. But this was this subtweet was certainly enough. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I'm just kind of stirring the pot at this point. It's November and who knows when normal track and field, you know, it feels like in the outdoor Mm -hmm. season, it's, we're going to have hopefully a vaccine by then things are going to look a lot different than they look right Mm -hmm. now. We don't really even know. So maybe Wade Van Niekirk is just waiting to really ramp it up full bore when everything returns somewhat to normal he actually has some competition and he says it's better to stay healthy right now and not rip sub 44 second times maybe that's a possibility i don't think that but you know what Mm -hmm. i'm happy to of have uh cause this minor controversy it seems it seems (laughs) all in good fun it seems like it's in good fun to me speaking of stirring the pot Here's a quote from Usain Bolt that I'm reading off the Olympic Channel's website. Quote, I think no one will get to my records soon. I don't think anyone is near my records. Yeah, I mean, it's tough to argue with that. 
I mean, no one's ever run within a tenth of his hundred. And what? Let's see. the The fastest guy, you know, the closest guy to him to his times right now, Christian Coleman, isn't going to run in the Olympics, and you know, very well may sit out his prime years uh, just based on his his uh, whereabouts ban. So the hundred for right now, there's no one coming close. I mean, even if Coleman was healthy, probably not running nine fifty eight. I mean, history tells mm-hmm. us that, you know, it's almost impossible to run under 9.7. So, yeah, forget about that. And then 19.19, I mean, obviously Lyles is the person we're looking towards. And he's run 19.50, but we all know that's a long, a, a long way off. And I think everyone can appreciate that Usain Bolt was a once in a generation and possibly once in a... I don't know, century athlete. I mean, he, you know, I, it's going to take an athlete that we haven't seen yet to, to break his records. I I truthfully don't think, you know, even if Coleman comes back and is improved somehow, um, I don't think he's getting down to 958 and I don't think Lyles is getting down to 1919 and that's no taking anything away from them. They're just not as good as the greatest track and field athlete of all time. And they shouldn't be ashamed of that. I, I agree. I don't, this, almost isn't a headline. I mean, I, it's, I think everyone who watches or has watched track and field would be like, yeah, that's, that's correct. You're the sky is blue. That's, that is in fact true. You saying, well, it's a headline because in track, usually people hedge and they say records are made to be broken and you never know with this next generation coming up. I think Bolt enjoys much more talking about now that his career is over about the legacy of his times as opposed to when he was competing and he was constantly asked ever since 2009, when are you going to run faster than those world records? And he had Mm -hmm. eight more, eight more years of his career after that, of which he only got close on a couple of occasions to those times. And in the last couple of years Mm -hmm. was really nowhere near it. And yet people, because they didn't have anything to ask or because they genuinely thought it to be true and didn't understand how track and field worked, that he was going to all of a sudden in his last year you know, go through a regular season running nine eights and then go to the championship and then pop like a 955. Uh, that yeah. that was never in the cards. I, so I think he enjoys this more. I think he enjoys now that he's retired sitting back and saying 958, 1919, I'm in the clubhouse. We'll see if anybody can beat him. P.S. Probably not. I mean, I, I was not in track media when Usain Bolt was in his prime from 2000, you know, 2008 to 2012, 2013. But the the way we, to a lesser extent, we the way he was covered was kind of seems similar to the way LeBron James is covered in, in basketball, where there's always going to be people in the media or people outside in social media who are, you know, wanting a little bit more. And you're like, well, you're kind of ignoring the the fantastic record and the unbelievable performance that we're seeing in front of our eyes. We're faulting, right. let's not fault a guy in Usain Bolt who ran world records really, really young and, oh, he can't match them, but he still found a way to extend his prime all the way 2008 to, to 2016. I mean, that's that's mm. a stunning achievement. So one day I was driving in my car, and this, this sounds ridiculous, but I, 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 I don't know what I was listening to. It must have been this podcast and you and Gordon, but I... I it just hit me that Usain Bolt went back to back to back in the hundred and 200. And sometimes I think that that gets lost. Um, Not sure why, Um, but that is unheard of (laughs) ridiculously, ridiculously good. And to make the LeBron James comparison, obviously Usain Bolt doesn't have like a, a foil and Michael Jordan that everyone measures him next to. So it is a little bit different, Mm -hmm. but I, to that point of when are you going to run faster? he didn't need to run faster. What, what, right, what you know, right. those were clearly outlier performances. Uh, looks like I broke up there. We should have been appreciating him separately that he was able to do that and yeah. still win despite the fact that he had come closer. He had come back to earth a little bit and still had that mental advantage over his peers to still win despite the fact that his um, physical skills had diminished just a hair. I, I kind of compare that to LeBron James a little bit, kind of the the, the, the figuring out how to, to um, still be competitive, still win while 
reinventing yourself as an athlete obviously sprinting more simple than than basketball you know you still have to run yeah. fast but bolt played the game perfectly throughout his entire career not you know knowing when it was time to strike to run records and then otherwise you know racing sparingly just trying to be healthy for for the finals and the olympics and the world championships and just relying on his physical talent and and mental edge over everyone else to to, to stay on top it it was a, an incredible career and he should never have to apologize for anything but he's absolutely right his records not not a, a i don't think in my in, in our lifetime will be will be touched yeah i think with lyles and the 200 i think the american record is the target and i think that is certainly mm -hmm. under threat the next couple of years yeah especially with this run of championships potentially that could go down but you could see something in the mm -hmm. in sub 9 19 3. it's a whole nother leap yeah. down to to yes. 1919 but in and of itself the 1932 would be a massive accomplishment yeah i think you hit the nail on the head with bolt it's he was covered as a spectacle and not as an athlete and everybody expected more and more every single time even when it was clear that he was on the downward trajectory and he was still susceptible to the same physical decline that every other human being was the difference between him and lebron is you know or him and michael jordan in basketball if you get the win that covers everything else up in basketball certainly jordan his final year uh with the bulls he was not the same player he was earlier in his career but he got the championship he made the final shot and everybody thinks of those years of jordan as just one dominant performance after the other with Bolt, he had that time out there, those times, the 958 and the 1919. So when he's winning, but he's running 9.78 or something like that, it's not as spectacular. It's not seen as important because he's just competing against himself. Whereas in, in team sports, it's a little bit different because you don't have that, that time element just sticking there, that world record that you're chasing constantly. And I guess this can just turn into a Usain Bolt appreciation podcast. But one more thing is, you know, he did pretty good runner. Lose. He did, yeah, he did lose the hundred in the in the World Championships in 2017. But what did he do to kind of set himself up for that not to be to be a tarnish on his legacy? Was he said all and all throughout that season leading up? Well, I'm just coming back for the fans. I'm just, you know, yeah. I would have retired yeah. after 2016. I'm coming back for the fans. It's in London, obviously. A, you know, he had. A, 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 one of the biggest moments of his career there in 2012 and uh not saying he knew he was going to lose in the in the 100 meter final but if things went haywire it was kind of like well I, I i wanted to be done but i came back for the fans not only does that make him even more popular to the fans to feel appreciated but it also sets him up like you know i realized yeah, I but was, that wasn't i was done that yeah. wasn't believable that though. Was it wasn't believable yeah. Yeah. that yeah. was not believable because it's not like we were two years away from a gold medal or three years away from a gold medal. Mm -hmm. Just the year before he dominated the Olympics in the hundred and the 200 yeah. and look, and look pretty dang strong. It wasn't like, it was a believable guy in that. I, to me, yeah. To me, it, it probably highlighted, well, Usain's probably doing 80% of the training that he would maybe, and which for him, if he's cutting off 20% of training, that might be, that might be something significant. I don't know that for a fact, but we all know he famously hated training. So well, I, I think I, he was banged you know, up. Who knows? I think he was banged up. Yeah. I think he was banged up yeah. and, and, uh, we could see the loss coming, but we also could see the loss coming in 2015 and the loss never came in 2015. So he was able to delay that just a little bit more and eventually time caught up to him. I think the training thing is weird because he seemed, though he was such a dominant physical presence, he also seemed to be a bit fragile, right? He had the back issues throughout his career yeah. and the hamstring stuff. So the lack of training might have actually been a good thing for him because it allowed him to not go into overdrive too much. Like he knew exactly how him and his coach knew exactly how to get himself ready when he needed to go. But I remember was it after 17 or even into 18, maybe when people saying, Oh, he might come back in 2020 and just run a, run a four by one leg with Jamaica. Like that was something that was being floated out there as a possibility. I always thought he might, come back i thought him and eaton both might end up coming back and i turned out to be lincoln style wrong on both of those things well they both had children they both had kids so that contributed um you're allowed to come back yeah, when you, you have kids you are you're yeah you can that. still do you can still there's be no rule and have kids it's, there's no rule um i think the ship has sailed for both of those the both of them though if you say right, bolt right. comes back and i mean it'd be it'd be fun if he came back in 2021 after four years away but 
I don't think it is in fact happening, but man, how much, how long will it still be Usain Bolt kind of like hovering over the entire sport where he, his commentary is, you know, you know, yeah, is so, so valued uh, because, you know, it was it after the Lyles final in Doha when he like made like some Instagram post or something that was throwing yeah, yeah. shade at Lyles. And it was mm-hmm. kind of like, we were all like, well, Bolt just said it wasn't that impressive. So I definitely have to agree. That wasn't that impressive from Lyles. <laughs> and that's the standard. It's like Bolt can lose. Obviously he's way more accomplished than Lyles. Um, I mean, Lyles has a long way to go, but you know, Bolt can lose his last race and pull a hamstring and everyone's like, you know, what you know? What an inspirational way to go out! And then Lyles wins the world title, but not by that much. And Bolt says, "Hmm, you know, coming after my mark." Yeah, you know, I don't remember the exact situation or whatever, well, but it's just he just controls the narrative, and he's still the voice of the sport. Even some, you know, now it's going to be four years since he last competed. Soon, so it's. Uh, let me ask the you impre- this: the, the imprint he's put on is me- incredible. Yeah, yeah, but l- let me ask you this: How many Olympics? How many Summer Olympics do you have memories of? In your life, I'm sorry. You, the the it broke up. The internet's causing trouble oh. today. What was that? Oh, over at the over at the Shrike household, you got to get in that yeah. super podcast recording shed here. Yeah. Uh, how many how many Olympics do you have memories of? Summer Olympics. How far can you go? Back? Uh, just four through sixteen. Two thousand four through sixteen. Okay, so two thousand four, two thousand eight, twelve, and sixteen. So yeah. of those four Olympics, Usain Bolt swept. In three of them, yeah, and, yeah, exactly. And you're not a young, you're not a young guy. You're in no, your 30s now. Yeah, yeah. but so, but seventy five percent of the Olympics that you've seen included yeah. Usain Bolt dominating the hundred and the two hundred. So, yeah, of course he's going to loom large for decades yeah. to come because there would need to be three more Olympic games before it evens out. Or sorry, two more. Well, wait, let me do my math here. So three out of the four. So you'd need to be at four out of the eight. Carry the one. Basically, it's going to be a while before somebody else could even take that place, even if they're going to start like filling into that role. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It, yeah, that's a good I point. Mean, and uh, I mean, it helps that he won three in a row of things that are separated out by four-year increments. I mean, that's that's mm-hmm, how you mm-hmm. stay relevant for a very, very long time in, in the sport. Obviously, he won world titles in between there, but uh, absolutely right. Him and Michael Phelps are, if I think of the Olympics, you know, that's who I think of, yeah. him and Michael Phelps. And there's been other athletes that have been accomplished. Um, don't want to exclude female athletes as well that have been dominant. But um, that uh, when you get the job done at the Olympics and you run your records, uh, I guess he ran his records outside of that. But, you know, yeah. his best moments are at the Olympic Games. And that, and yeah. that, does more for your legacy than about anything in, in, in track and field. And so uh, the, the jury's still out. Obviously, they, you know, Coleman's set himself up to maybe never have those moments by, by, being, by being banned here. And then, and then Lyles yeah. will have it in 2021. Um, but, you know, a lot of pressure is going to be on him. You feel bad for Lyles. I mean, he's got he's to go out and win the 100 and the two, obviously, to, to have any mm-hmm. – to be in the conversation. Or you feel like it's, it's – it's over for him. You know, he's never touching Usain Bolt. I, I think most people think he's not as far as records and the amount of gold medals, but the standard is just so high set by Usain Bolt. It, it's almost, it's almost, it's cruel for him. It's like a, it's, it's cruel for him to, to, I know Lyles kind of started it, but to kind of like, like pick on Noah Lyles, you know, after he wins his first world title, it's like, come on, dude, you're not playing. You're like the, you're like the sixth grader that's already shot up to six foot two playing pickup basketball against the rest of us that are five one. I mean, it's just not, it's not fair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Lyles could go 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. He's got yeah. a five year stretch bef- before there's another off year. Yeah. And I mean, if he wins the 200 and all of them, then that's six gold medals total. He'd yeah. need to start getting some some sweeps to be on that yeah. level with with Bolt in the same way that you know you try to do the same math and figure out well how can Chepta guy catch Mo Farah in terms of resume? You could do a mm-hmm. similar thing with with Lyles, although the Chepta guy already has the times. Lyles doesn't have yeah. the times or the medals. Yeah, 
uphill battle. You mentioned uh, his potential uh, uh, a comeback, a bolt comeback. I don't think that's happening because in the same article that I was quoting, he said that Cristiano Ronaldo could beat him in a race right now. So that's mm. not a good sign that you're ready to run in the Olympics. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Ronaldo's a great athlete, but probably not the, one of the world's best sprinters right now. So, yeah, that's... He's no DK Metcalf, point. is what I'm saying. Mm, yeah, definitely not a Tyree Kill type either. Um, no, no, no. He's, a, he's more of a lunch tail. He's more of a blue collar type of a sprinter now, Usain Bull. He just wins in the 10-5 range, real tactical type of a type of a guy. Now, I'd be think- curious what he could run right now in the 100. Do you think elite athletes like me and Grant Holloway could beat uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, for example? For sure. I mean, what's <laughs> Ronaldo do? He just kicks a ball. He doesn't like run all over the field or anything. I, th- I think. Yeah. I think. I think you've got a great shot. I mean, all I'm saying is, you know, famous sports writer tweet. You know, I could. I could hit a three pointer. I could. Uh, I. I could score a goal. I could even hit a home run. But I could never score a goal in in hockey. You know. Just that I don't know where that's going, but somebody once said they could hit a they could hit a home run in an MLB game, and they got laughed off the internet. I think their Twitter just, account just went poof. Um, I could run a sub four mile, you know. Yeah. Well, that was my impression. I I famously say that was my impression of distance running when I first saw saw it when I was watching the 04 Olympics, and I think I was watching Hisham El Garouge. They did go out pretty slow that year. They did and, go out in 235 and I, or I something, watched it, I and, I, and I said, why, it, you know, because on TV, it just looks so much slower. And it's like, why is this hard? Why can you not just keep up the whole time? Like, I don't understand. It just didn't look hard at all. It's my first yeah. impression of distance running. Turns out I was wrong on that one. That, that set me off on a yeah. long track record of being incorrect on track and field takes. But it's my first bad take. <laughs> <laughs> a young Lincoln watching his first Olympics thinking, what's the big deal? Yeah. <laughs> There's got to be at least a thousand people who could do that. that yeah. But you are right in terms of the average person watching Kipchoge doesn't appreciate it the same way that they watch DK Metcalf like chase down Buda Baker. And people go, oh my gosh, look how fast yeah. he was. He ran down the field so much quicker. Like this, the speed translates way better to the screen when you're going that yeah, fast absolutely. versus – no, no, no. Kipchoge is running 434 miles for 26.2 yeah. miles. Trust me, it's hard. Yeah, and, it, you know, football has a massive visibility advantage over over uh, Elliot Kipchoge and the sport of track and field. Although, you know, Kipchoge... It's catching may up. The, it's catching up. He may, he may take the lead in documentaries made about him soon as far as track and field. I don't know if Bolt has yeah. how many he has, but there's... He's a documentarian's dream, it appears. Um, him, him, uh, running these these fast marathon times. Um, so who knows? Maybe he'll catch up to the NFL soon, and we'll be like, could Elliot Kipchoge beat this kicker in a in a hundred meter dash? I don't know. I'm just mm-hmm. I'm just being, stupid, but um, <laughs> no, you're right. Track and field has a publicity problem when it comes to the nfl is part of the problem <laughs> i don't know lincoln i'm gonna disagree with you on that one I think yeah track is right there it's 1a yeah. and 1b is the way i see those two sports yeah uh a cu- couple other new di- news items we want to touch on yesterday gordon and i talked about kira de 1507 road 5k turns out that course was not certified so we do not know if it was a 1507 we do not know if uh it was the full distance and Thus, it cannot be counted as a PR. I know we mentioned her getting another PR. But we, we do know she beat a pretty good field by yeah. quite a bit, quite a, quite a healthy margin. So my opinion stands at the fact that, uh, of the fact that she could, be a, she could be an Olympian next year. She could be in that mix. Um, as Gordon mentioned, when there's a mile to go or something in the 10K, she should be in that, in that group. And yeah. if you're in that group, you have a chance based on what she's done yeah, this year. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I expect you guys to issue a full apology correction to 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 your commentary yesterday, being that it was uh, mm-hmm. not a certified Redacted. certified course. No, um, that's what. Why why do people go to the lengths of having a race if you're not going to get it certified? I don't I don't understand that. Like, what is that's like that's a that's a very strange thing to me. I've never really understood mm-hmm. that. Is it, is it that much more expensive? Um, 
you know? No, I, I don't it's know. not. It's just- yeah, I, I'm going to count it as 15.07. I, even if it was 3.08 mm-hmm. miles, I'm, I'm counting it. It's, it's in my book. It's certified in the Lincoln Trike book of, of uh, track and field records. And, uh, you know, I think she's done we'll enough keep this it as year a mo- to, to, to suggest it should just run it, 15.07 on the roads. It should just show the margin of victory over everybody else. She gets, mm-hmm. she gets yeah. like, a, like a, mi- a, a minus 30 or something like that over yeah. good runners. That's what matters. Mm-hmm. She should hop in this uh, Arizona marathon that's coming up next month. Like, why didn't she just do that? That'd no, be, that'd be no, 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 no. She should not run. I think the lesson of this year is she's not a marathoner. No? She should do something else. Okay. She should run the mm. 10K. She's yeah. a 10K runner, well, right? You bold. Yeah, you can do bold. I guess she's already oh, yeah, missed yeah. the Olympic team. So you could wait. Yeah, that you'd be wasting an effort by running the marathon. I just thought she's racking up W's, man. She's like Jameis yeah. Winston, just W, 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 W. Yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> Tastes so good. Um, Please don't do that again on the pod. Yeah, sorry, I knocked my <laughs> microphone. Um, so, what do you do? You think there's other people hiding in the marathon that are secretly Olympic trials contenders in the five k, the ten k, but they're punishing themselves in the marathon for some reason? This no, that, we thing. rarely see that. You know, it's like you're toiling away running two thirty, and then all of a sudden, hey, did you realize you could be a contender on the track at age thirty? <laughs> wait for it to come back gosh my internet is just acting up today taylor texas not having it yeah it's a it's a rare thing to it's a rare thing to be able to i mean it's unheard of thing to be like a a marathoner a decent marathoner not elite but then just hop on the track Mm -hmm. age 36 and all of a sudden you just have all this untapped potential It, it just it defies our our understanding it'd be like if jared ward i mean different obviously jared ward's a highly accomplished marathoner be like if Jared Ward decided, you know, get running the five thousand and ten k, and all of a sudden he's running, you know, thirteen twelve and 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 twenty seven thirty. It's it's not what we come to expect or um, beats our understanding of how this works. So it, she's been quite the uh, interesting case of of late career progression. It'd be like if Daphne Shipper spent a good chunk of her career doing the heptathlon and then she discovered she's a world championship sprinter. Oh, wait, that happened. Yeah, that did happen. <laughs> Impressive. Kind of strange. Or if Car- Carson Warholm just stuck with the decathlon and was like, yeah. you know what? This is my event. I don't see a future. Just go back to the to decathlon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a couple other stories I want to touch on uh, before we go. Much more serious in nature, but I did want to talk about them. Uh, first of all, Conceslas Kipruchu has been arrested in Kenya. The gold medal steepler has been charged with defilement um, after reports that he had sex with a 15-year-old, and he will be facing trial, it appears, in May of 2021. Just a horrible story here. Um, not much to add on my end other than Hope to see see justice here done. Yeah, it's a scary thing for everyone involved, and I have no way of knowing how to comment on it other than to say we'll see how it how it plays out. Um, you know, there's details and encourage people to to re- read the articles and you know the reports of this individual being at his house and she being uh, you know apparently 15 years old. We don't know if he knew that or not, but in any case, it's still wrong if that is in fact what happened, that he was engaged in activity with this minor. Uh, and it's a sad situation and there's nothing else I can really add to enhance this, this uh, or, you know, change the outlook here. It's a, it's, it's, you know, if it's, if it's exactly true what he did, it's disgusting. And, you know, he deserves to, have the full hand of the law come come down on him. Uh, I think it's a fair chance, you know, um, this is obviously completely separate than that, but it's a fair chance we've seen Conceslas Kipruto in his last competitive race, um, which, you know, is, you know, sad in and of itself. Obviously, it's not anywhere in comparison if he did, in fact, do what he's accused of. You, you don't really even think about that. This is entirely separate, and, you know, his racing career is trivial compa- by comparison. But... You know, this would be a sad way for his career, obviously, to end, but a deserving way if he's guilty of what they're accusing him of. Mm-hmm. Uh, other story I want to touch on: Pastamenya is going to 
take her case to the European Court of Human Rights. And you asked me before we started, you said, how many levels of courts do we have to go here? <clears throat> is, this, is this court a court that has bearing over what Kaz would rule? Because we thought we were at the end of the road here uh, after appeal, after appeal, after appeal. Uh, not a legal expert on that one, but I'm assuming it's going to have some weight. Otherwise, they wouldn't pursue this opportunity and her legal team would not spend time, money, and energy on mm -hmm. on pushing pushing the case to the to the court of human rights, even if it's just a, a victory that is public relations in nature. Yeah, that's that's what I'm that's the big question is like what jurisdiction, what authority do they have to overrule Kaz's decision and what how if anything would that do to world athletics ability to kind of keep her out of the sport. Um mm -hmm. this has always been to me and I think to you a human rights situation where it felt unfair the way she was treated. Um even even separate from keeping her off the track. It just the just the way she was treated obviously going back to 2009 was a massive human rights violation it felt like obviously there, I, I don't know the, the legal definition of a human rights violation if there is one but you know she has been shamed in the sport of track and field when she's one of its greatest champions and uh f the 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 fact that you know she's not able to compete just with the way she was born is 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 tough for me to to um to swallow and and i know that you know, there are biological differences that people will cite to say why she shouldn't be able to compete in the, the female category. But regardless, separate from that, the, the, it, it, it is the, the, the way that she has been made to be as the villain uh, of this whole situation when it's in fact been World Athletics bungling this embarrassing her at, at every turn for her just trying to compete. Mm -hmm. uh, Hopefully that's the type of stuff you mentioned the PR. Hopefully that's the type of stuff that continues to get out because I, I think world athletics has come out of this pretty scot-free. And I think that that comes with the, the fact that track and field globally is not a high level, you know, sport with a ton of attention on it. Um, and this is complicated and I don't know how other sports would handle this per se, but it, it feels like world athletics hasn't, really had the finger pointed at them as they should have for how poorly they handled this and 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 um how egregious their their behavior was from the start all the way through to making rules that were clearly targeted for for caster semenya so at least if that you know keeping this up you have to admire her for continuing to fight it would have been really easy i think for her to go away and become cynical mm -hmm. obviously for this whole this whole process um, so I certainly applaud her for, for continuing to, to fight, even if it is that the odds of her ever returning in the 800 in the Olympics and the world championships are still very, very long. I think it's not like she doesn't understand that. I mean, of course she's hoping to come back, but, um, I think given her understanding of where it's at for her to still be fighting is something to be ad admired. And, um, Hopefully, this is a case that brings more attention to her situation, regardless of what you think of it. Um, I, th I think mm -hmm. it's good that this is something that because the way this all played out was not normal. Like the the way you know her the pu publication back in two thousand nine of her you know her biology was shameful, um, mm -hmm. and you know a lot of things have happened since then but we we should never forget yeah. that and let world athletics get away with that um they tried to reverse the engineer a ruling around getting yeah. her out of the sport is what they try to do yeah. they found the precedent has been had, set that a, if yeah yeah if you run fast enough they're gonna they're yeah. finding a way to to get you out and they the they've been kind of clear about that which is why it was so surprising to me that Kaz ruled in the way that they did because it was not a clear, transparent rule from the get-go. Mm -hmm. It was, hey, if a if person runs this fast, then we're going to really look into that because it's going to start mm -hmm. disrupting the, the competitive balance here. The quote in the story, uh, or the quote uh, from her lawyer was, we will be taking War Athletics to the European Court of Human Rights. Public support goes a long way to help show how the rules from War Athletics mm -hmm. are against public interest. With growing support from institutions and bodies across the globe, we remain hopeful that World Athletics will see the error it has made and reverse the prohibitive rules which restrict Mrs. Semenya, Ms. Semenya 
from competing. And I think that goes to what we were saying before. It's just you want to rack up some sort of legal win so that way you can say, hey, this human rights group is saying what you're doing is wrong, what the rule is wrong. Will you will you reconsider? And it's not you know it's not enough to get them to just overturn it because this court I don't think has jurisdiction to do that, but it is something that would move they're hoping would move public support for her and against the rule as it currently stands. Yeah, and I think World Athletics thing has always been that they're not afraid to be made to look like the villain in the, by other people. I mean, they've done a good job making Semenya in the sport look like a villain um, for just trying to compete, but they, they're they're not afraid to look like that, and their their argument's going to be, well, we're trying to protect other athletes. So I don't think this will move the needle, like you said, um, as far as her getting back on the track and the 400 through the mile, but um, – mm-hmm. I, I'm I I am somewhat surprised. I thought maybe maybe she would be if if, if the season would have been normal. But I I you know anticipated that she was going to be trying to run the two or the or the three thousand, you know, um, mm-hmm. and maybe that's still coming. But that that's where we'll get. Not that it hasn't both. already been obvious what they're trying to do, but that's where it's going to start. You know, if she if she gets competitive in one of those two events, if they try to amend their rules again, um, <laughs> that's where maybe I think she would have a case where it's like. Um, I don't know. Somehow, yeah. if this wasn't already obvious, it's it's even more obvious. Oh, we're changing the rules again. The two hundred, it's now the two hundred through the five k that you can't do if you you know if your mm-hmm. testosterone is above this level. You know, is always arbitrary and clearly targeted. So, yeah, we'll see. One other story I want to touch on. This just came across from the AIU. They have provisionally suspended twenty twenty Sophia Marathon winners Victoria. Capellinia and Yusuf Sabai for the presence of recombinant EPO following an in-competition test at this bronze label race. So both the winners of the Sofia Marathon on October 11th have tested positive. And I'm reading a tweet from David Monty, which it says it all here. He says, in over 25 years of covering the sport, I've never seen the male and female winners of the same marathon from different countries both get caught for doping with the same substance. You can't make this Mm. stuff up. We're making history in 2020, Lincoln. Mm, maybe there was a, you know, maybe some people got in their pre-race packet. They got a little EPO in there, <laughs> you know, kind of like spread around. Oh, I'm just kidding. Uh, here's yeah, this new a, gel. Yeah. Here's some body a, glide to put on. And here's some EPO. And hey, AIU is just like thrilled. They're like, oh, finally, just an anti-doping case, not a whereabouts thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so easy. <laughs> Here's yeah, the results. Just, Look at the results. Yeah. It has nothing to do with knocking on someone's door. Yeah. No one's phone yeah. number was wrong. There's no gas canisters involved. Yeah. There's no trips yeah. to the mall. It's just Here's good old-fashioned yeah. EPO. Well, the the defense, if they appeal, these athletes should appeal it as if they're doing a whereabouts. They're like, yeah, you knocked on the wrong door. That wasn't my urine. I have... I have four twins. Um, I'm uh, so that you knocked. That was their urine that you knocked on. That was not my door. I yeah. was actually in room three hundred three. Uh, and uh, oh, what you're saying? Three hundred three is not a room number. I meant three hundred four. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, no. So flat three hundred three. That's what it was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just incredible. Uh, so. Mm-hmm. Good Impressive. job by them catching them. Yeah, good job. Good job to the testers there. God, they showed up at that one. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was good. I mean, yeah, getting popping people still for taking EPO in 2020. What are you doing? Yeah, everybody else has moved on to uh, you know, mechanical doping with the spikes. I don't know what's what's <laughs> come on. Like we, we've all we've all moved on. They couldn't get the they couldn't get the alpha flies for the race. Yeah. So this was the next I guess one. we'll kick it no old lights. school. <laughs> who's who's yeah who's got who's got the needle we're sharing in room 303 uh yeah, yeah. i don't know that's tough that's yeah it brings me back a little bit i'm nostalgic for the epo the epo days um come on everyone else knows how to microdose what are you doing just taking the full load before your race like come on like my goodness so david also says that uh Sa- spy S B A I I. He also won the Varna Marathon on November seventh, so he won one mm-hmm. on October eleventh, and then won three weeks later. 
Well, we really should have been suspicious when he beat Cristiano Cristiano Ronaldo in a race, too. That was when we really knew it was going to be – sorry, I'm making light of all this. Um, Yeah, I mean, I'm glad this person was caught. I've never heard of this person, so – Okay, so he is – Not that significant of an athlete. He's 40 years old. His PR is 209.53 from Seville in 2020. So he set his PR – when he was 39 years old, he's run four marathons this year. Um, half marathon PB is 102.42, and let me look at her. Let's look at her Tila here. So there's a reason you didn't know who he was, unless you're keeping track of 40 year old 209 marathoners. I don't know. I haven't are. been. I've, 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 that's one of the things lost during this quarantine period. I've stopped my, my masters for, you know, it hasn't been a good year for masters marathoners, right? The, the American guy who no. was winning all those, was winning all those yeah. things got busted for years. Uh, uh, it's probably more prevalent than we think. They're just not testing as, as much in that, in those races. So she, Victoria yeah. Hapolinia is, 28 years old from Ukraine. Her PR was in this in this marathon where she tested positive 227.57. Her half marathon PB is 72.24. I'm trying to see if she's run other. Okay, she's run a 228 marathon, a 236 marathon. So this was her best, the best marathon of her career. Oh, she ran in the World Championships in 2017. DNF'd. Oh. And I wonder why it was her best see. marathon of her life. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to put connect the dots here, and I can't quite yeah. figure it out. It's tough to <laughs> – everybody getting PRs for some reason. Yeah, yeah she's Real not – yeah, she's not uh, – yeah, 228 was her best before this. So she, she knocked off only six seconds, but then um, a lot of times in the 230s and, and 240s for yeah. her. So draw the conclusions mm-hmm. as yeah. you will. <laughs> like there you I, said, go. I just wanted to get that story in there. I want to take away all the stories for tomorrow so you and Gordon have yeah, literally nothing just, to talk about. Yeah, it's a Wednesday show. It'll be fun. We'll we'll just we'll figure out. I think we may do you know, we may do like track and field trades. Like mm. fake track and field trades. I was thinking about this before I went to bed, you know. Would you I was thinking here here's a here's a Potential. We'll give people a taste for what we're going to talk about because I know it's trade season in the NBA. It's, things are starting mm-hmm. to happen. You know, the season starts in like three weeks, despite the fact that it just ended like yesterday, which makes a lot of sense. I love it. Um, it's like soccer. It's like here's seven a, seasons at the same time. Here's a potential trade for you. Okay. Adidas gets the rights to Galen Rupp and the two. Two future most prominent signings in the sport. I know, a little subjective, but they they get first access to sign the athlete for Nike for the rights of Noah Lyles. Who says no? Uh, that's a tough one. I got to put that in the trade machine. I yeah, you I do. think I make that. I think I make the deal if I'm Nike. I think I make that yeah, deal. you think? I mean, obviously, you got a lot of deep. You got yeah, Nike. I mean, would take that. I mean, they get you know they have to say goodbye to a long relationship with Galen Rupp, but you know he's like thirty. What is he? 34, 35, 33 maybe. I don't know. Expiring forget, contract. No, it's a big expiring contract. That's like a Chris yeah. Paul type contract. On the books. And you get first access to. I mean, I'm sorry, we don't have a draft, so I can't say first two to you know a 2021 a 2022 yeah, yeah. draft pick. I don't know who the signings are going to be. Protected. Yeah, I don't. Again, I don't know how we protect in this situation. Um, yeah. But that—that's just something I popped in my mental trade machine uh, um, last night. Um, you know, so we may do you that. Gotta trade among, you got to trade amongst countries. That's that's more fun because you got to find you got to find like countries that have like a weak a weak spot and and mm-hmm. try to like you got to like Kenya a good sprinter. In exchange for like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, you gotta yeah. you gotta pry, you gotta like pry away, like can you pry away one of the marathoners or something in exchange for a mm-hmm. sprinter? Yeah, um, we like, actually played, uh, I played this game with the, with a British guy in uh, at the 2016 trials. Went out to to get to get some drinks after a day at the trials, 
and tried to figure out a way to trade for Jessica Ennis because the U.S. at that point did not have any good heptathletes. And I spent like a yeah. good 30 minutes coming up with fictitious trade packages. And then he eventually his conclusion was she's not for sale. So I was like, ah, oh, man, darn it. Untouchable, yeah, yeah. untouchable pieces right there. Wow. OK. I yeah. think I was going to say I mean, Kipchoge for, for like the entire state of California. Like they get they get Sidney McLaughlin, they get Dalila Muhammad. I mean, there's a ton of other athletes there. You can he's he's so good that he has he has uh, the chance to get traded for an entire state in the union and and a significant one at that. So, yeah, but that's just that's my point there. Like the women's formula hurdles, you got two there, so you have you have some assets that you could trade. Yeah, in in the same event. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then you could go like I feel, and I feel like you could t like Mo Farah, right? You could get Mo Farah to Jamaica for the right price. It's almost like an you MLS could. or a, a good right. European soccer player coming over to the MLS for the end of their career, so they can sell tickets. Like you could, you could get Mo Farah uh, to Jamaica, but then it like, appears what does Jamaica have to you pay back right now. Yeah, I, it appears that Mo Farah's price is dropping precipitously. I mean, he's on get. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. Uh, you know, right now. So it feels like he'll he'll say yes to a lot of things right now. I think we could trade him to. You know, he may hitch a ride to Australia. You know, real quick. He may. You know, we could probably deal yeah. him straight up for Morgan McDonald at this point. Um. So no, no, no. You know, no, 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 no. Because not not Morgan McDonald, but. Like maybe like McSwain, maybe like McSwain mm. and McDonald. But then it's like, why does Britain want McSwain? Like they have a lot already in the fifteen hundred. That just adds more. Yeah, Britain, and I, I've heard gotta, McSwain's a non-starter. He's a non-starter down under Kevin. So uh, I'm just any package is, to, but for the Brits, any package is going to have to center is going to center around McSwain. So it's gonna they're gonna have to to figure something else out. Um, you know, maybe they can swing they a three-way deal. Nick Willis, Nick Willis will get he's a toss in, you know. He'll sell jerseys. He's from New That's Zealand. Sure. He's from New Zealand, wrong country. Yeah. Oh, you want to do a three country no, trade? It's a three team trade. It's a three country trade. Um Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I I just think I I just think if if this was 4 or 5 years ago Jamaica. Oh, maybe this is it. Maybe you go cross gender. Maybe you go well, but see, does Britain need another women's sprinter? They have Dean Asher Smith. I say you go Farah for Elaine Thompson. Straight up, straight up. Oh, impressive! Or do you get yeah, Shelly and Fraser Price? I don't know. Well, that's not maybe Brianna Williams. Williams. Britain's gonna Great Britain's gonna have to throw in uh, KJT if we're trying to trade for uh, if we're trying to get Shelly and Fraser Price. We're gonna need okay. one acronym for another acronym for 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 for, for Mo. So Mo and KJT for Shelly and Fraser Price. I'd probably make that deal. Oh, that's a great deal for for Jamaica. You get yeah one of the gold medal heptathlete, and you get a couple of years of of Farah running around. You have a distance threat yeah. now. Yeah, and you're no, giving like up Fraser Price at the end of, end of her career. Well, it's I mean, a think play about the four for by one for Britain. I mean, the four by one suddenly a, a factor. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's that's the move there. Now you become a big time player because you got you got two. But you know, Lincoln, the trend is big three. You got a couple three stars together, so you got to figure out a way. How do you get Marie Jose Talou there as well? <laughs> right? Do you do you ship Jake Whiteman and Josh Kerr to wow. Ivory Coast to get Marie Jose Talou, <laughs> and then you've got a big three that really nobody can mess with? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is fun. This is what Gordon and I will do tomorrow. Uh, see, it's fun. You're you're gonna miss out. Um, this is what we're Those left to thoughts. talk about right now. Track and field. Uh, it's not a ton. So we'll get to that tomorrow. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess, yeah, we'll see you then. Me and Gordon tomorrow on the pod. Always a favorite, a fan favorite, if you will. <laughs> see you guys then.